In 2011, Git Gat Raven, Norm Hahn, traveled to Haida Gwaii as part of the Stand Film Expedition. Its goal? To bring awareness to the threat of oil tankers on our north coast and to highlight the islands of the people, Haida Gwaii. Norm traveled by stand-up paddleboard from the ancient Haida village of Old Masset in the north to the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Skung Gwaii on the southwest corner of South Moresby. His presentation tonight will highlight the powerful places visited on this oceanic expedition. It will share unique and spiritual Haida legends, and hopefully it will inspire people to better understand the magic of the place we call Haida Gwaii. Please welcome Norm Hahn. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, let's go to Haida Gwaii. Um, I think all great expeditions and adventures begin with a vision a powerful vision that moves you forward. And for me, this is a vision that I'd looked at and that I'd thought about for a couple of years. I'd, I'd, I'd thought about myself paddling into this little bay and paddling up to these ancient totem poles here at, uh, at Skung Gwaii. It's right on the uh, bottom end of Haida Gwaii, very remote. We've got an incredible coastline, and we've got a threat to our coastline, and that threat is that red line that's on there. And actually, Frank Wolf is here, and he's done that whole route. I've got a couple of routes on here. I've got a... Um, uh, purple one on the mainland, that was my first one. It was called Stand Up for Great Bear. It was a 400 kilometer long expedition. And then you see the Haida Gwaii one down in the bottom. But this is what it's about. It's about standing up and saying no. And for me, it's about saying no to the oil tankers and looking after our coastline. We've got, our <laughs> yeah, we, we've got an incredible connected coastline and a lot of people that I've met along the way that are really passionate. We don't want to let anything happen to our our coastline. I feel pretty good about the power of the people, but I started in Old Masset. In Old Masset, uh, the Haida are broken down into ravens and eagles, and myself being adopted into the Raven Clan in, in Gitgat -Gat ter territory, I was really excited to be launching my paddleboard, you know, in the shadow of these, um, in the shadow of these totems at Old, Old Masset. They're also canoe builders, but for me, um, you know, launching my board in, in Dixon Entrance, it's nice because when you're planning an expedition, you have all those logistics. There's a lot of stress that, that comes with those expeditions, and you leave that all behind. You launch your paddle board, and, you know, they say a, a journey of a 1,000 miles begins with one step, and, and that's what it felt like. I felt good. This place is spectacular. This is North Beach, and one of the best views you can have on Haida Gwaii is right off the top of Toe Hill. Uh, it has some of the best surf in Haida Gwaii, um, anywhere in Canada, and I'm out there somewhere. It took me a full day to paddle this, um, to, to, to paddle North Beach, but it's still one of my favorite areas. One of the things that I was most apprehensive about was the weather and the ocean, and there's wrecks all around Haida Gwaii. It's some of the most dangerous bodies of water you can find any in the world are in Haida Gwaii, and you'll, you'll see these wrecks are situated all over the place. We've got oil tankers that are gonna have to cross Hecate Strait in the winter, and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. One of the coolest spots we have in Canada, and according to Haida legend, this is where the world began. This is Rose Spit, or Nikoon it's called. And according to Haida legend, the raven was here and opened up the clamshell. So I felt pretty good as a raven, making my way east here, and actually tiptoeing around. A lot of expeditions are uh, supported by a whole bunch of people, teammates, families, and friends that uh, you know really inspire you and really push you forward and, and allow you to, su uh, to support guys like Mike McQuay who owned the surf shop up in Haida Gwaii. I also feel really fortunate as a Canadian that we can stand up for what we believe in and, um, and do these types of trips. The, the Haida were, were fierce warriors, and they were incredibly talented watermen. And their 100-foot red cedar war canoes would regularly cross Hecate Strait. Uh, according to oral history, they, they were known to even travel to uh, Hawaii. There's a real connection to Hawaii and, and as far as Japan. I was excited to be leaving 
the, uh, the, the bleak shorelines and the flat shorelines of, of Graham Island in the north. I was heading south. I was averaging about, it took me eight days, so I was averaging about four, 40 to 50 kilometers a day. And I was really excited to be moving into South Moresby, where it was a lot more mountainous uh, and the shorelines were a lot more rugged. The Haida have been living here on Haida Gwaii for 12,000 years. I was really excited about this place in particular, Skadans, because it was the first watchman site that I got to. And my goal was to visit the five watchman sites. These are really culturally significant areas on Haida Gwaii where the Haida used to live. And then they uh, moved back to smaller areas like Skidigat and, and Old Masset. There's Haida watchmen that are here, and they bring the place alive. They're, they're stewards of the land. So when you land at these places, they open up their arms to you. For us, with the stand film crew that we had, they shared probably the best halibut and chips that I've ever, ever had. Always sharing traditional foods. It's, it's amazing. That's, uh, that's, uh, I feel really fortunate about that. When you've got Hecate straight on your left shoulder here, uh, it's a unique perspective actually looking back east and seeing that type of water. But when you have water like that, you try and get uh, paddling as, as quick as you can. And I was really pulled forward. I was really pulled forward by... Uh, the, the watchman sites, they really kept me moving. This spot here was one of the motivations for me wanting to come to Haida Gwaii. This is in, in the mid 80s, uh, Gu Jiao on the Haida made a stand of the logging companies and said there'll be no more logging. This is at Windy Bay. And you know, yesterday's battles of, of, of uh, you know, not cutting down the trees, I think are now being replaced by the battle against big oil and um, a lot of other uh, natural resources. This, because of Lyle Island and, and what the Haida had done, they saved this particular watershed, and it's the last intact watershed on Lyle Island. Massive, massive trees. This one in particular is over a thousand years old, and the Haida made their 100-foot war canoes out of a single cedar tree. One of the things I love about our coast is how the mountains go uh, right down into the ocean, and, and I love being on my paddleboard, looking at our coastline and looking at these mountains. The mountains are always inspiring me looking up at the snow. Haida Gwaii uh, has protected Guayanas National Park, and they actually protect it from the mountaintop all the way down to the ocean floor, the only place in the world that that happens. Here's the infinity pool, probably the best hot tub I had on, on Haida Gwaii. Uh, filmmaker Anthony Bonello actually dropped his $10,000 camera in the hot springs, and about two months after this, there was an earthquake, and the hot springs shut down, so I, we always blame Anthony for uh, you know, his poor offering to the Haida gods. Uh, when, when the ocean looks like this, you paddle as, as fast as you can and as far as you can. And I managed to get the last day done. It was a little over 60 kilometers of paddling, but I was very focused to get to uh, the World Heritage Site. And a day after this picture was taken, it went to 60 knots of wind and 8 meter seas on the exact route that I was at. Um, the vision that I had, I accomplished. I made it to the totem poles here on Haida Gwaii. These are really powerful places, and uh, I was really excited to land here and to uh, just soak it all in. Th these are places that everybody should visit, and this is probably one of the most powerful places that we have on our coastline. I guess once you realize one goal or, or one vision and you're really passionate about working towards something, then you, you start to look at a another vision. And I want to complete the tank route. I've done it on the mainland coast. I've done it here in Haida Gwaii, and the tankers are going to cross Hecate. So my goal is to uh, make it across Hecate straight in June and complete the la every last paddle stroke of that uh, tank route to bring awareness to our incredible coastline. That was awesome. And we need more people like you, my friend. Uh, really and truly. Absolutely. What's your most lasting memory of Haida Gwaii? Like one image. There's so many. It's a, that, that's a really difficult question because it's, um, there, there's so much of the landscape is, is so inspiring there. And I, yeah, I just have so many, so many great visions throughout there. But I would probably have to say, uh, you know, I love getting to the Watchman sites, but there's something really amazing about my first day and getting on the water and just, just the release that you had and the sense of freedom and paddling that North Beach. And if you've been to Haida Gwaii, there's uh, a really prominent landmark on Haida Gwaii, and it's Toe Hill, where that one of those pictures was taken. And so I was able to watch Toe Hill for about five hours because there was nothing else around there. And uh, uh, just getting on the water and that uh, sense that I was going to finally be here in Haida Gwaii, that apprehension, and then getting going with that goal. And, and uh, yeah, North Beach was pretty amazing.
Awesome. Norman. Thank you.